Hello, good morning. Uh, hello, this game stylist. How are you doing today? Zilby's here in, and... I don't know if you can hear him. He's meowing a bit. But it's not the few, full, like, loud, annoying meow. It's the... Okay, it's starting to become the full, annoying, loud meow. Zilby... We fed you this morning. Oh, he probably wants to play. Uh, stacking, hello. How are you doing today? This? Wait, you want this, or are you just going to stare at me? Um, Game Styles, you've created an Axum HTTP server and connected it to Mongoose. Oh, congratulations. Wait, did, did he run into the tunnel, or did he run out of the room? I feel like he ran out of the room, didn't he? Uh, congratulations on setting that up. How was it? How are you enjoying uh, Mongoose with Axum? But in response, you're getting underscore ID. Yes. Um, if I remember correctly, Mongo has their ID as underscore ID, right? Uh, are you like deserializing it with Surde? Or are you getting some kind of like just normal rest object out of it? The Mongol official driver for rest is pretty legit. Nice. Um, yes. Unfortunately, I, I delayed long enough that I, I asked two questions. It's making you feel old inside. Pretty nice uh, company is making their own legit driver. Uh, I mean, I think I mentioned this before. I, I used to know somebody who worked at Mongo, and it always seemed like a really good... Like, they were always happy. They were always doing interesting things. So, I'm not... Uh, like, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Mon Mongo's pretty legit. Um, okay, so if you're using Serde to, to convert over the object and it has a dot I, uh, underscore ID in it, you can either use Serde to rename it at the time of deserialization, or you can write another object, sort of like your own model, and uh, then implement a from to it so you you get handed the object from uh like you do in like an into from the thing you get from mongo and uh, into your own your own has just id and theirs has the underscore id and then you just handle it inside of the from that's probably what i would i would end up doing uh that way you have your own model that's not reliant upon mongoose's model uh, and uh, you can just add whatever. You can extend, essentially, it with features and functionality that you want to have. 
Yeah, and then you can use that ID to get by ID. Like it's it's you need the ID. It's just the question of like you you want it without the underscore in front of it. I'm guessing. Well, what you could do is you could have a custom model that only has ID in it, not the underscore ID. And then you can implement from the mongoose model to your model. And then that converts the underscore ID to the ID. So you're not losing the ID, you're just changing its name. I, I assume that's what you were, your problem was, like you just don't want it to be underscore? Okay, so you have success true data. Right, right. So you get you get the metadata object from Mongoose. And then instead of data, you have an array that has objects with like, you know, the underscore ID. And you want to turn all of those individual objects into like your own version of the object. One that has an ID instead of an underscore ID, right? Oh, weird. Why is there an old inside of ID? Did it get changed? It's been forever since I've used Mongo and Mongoose. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. Why, why does that have there? Uh, Supercuber, hello. You started getting old at some version two. You remember having to handle it? Was that also in Rust, or is that elsewhere? Like, is this a is this just a, just a general mongoose thing? Let's see what let's see what Google says. You think the object that he's struck serializes to old. That's strange. Well, I'm not seeing like a large amount of stuff here. Which makes me think that maybe it's more of a rust thing.
Ah, uh, it's a rust thing. I mean, adding rest doesn't really help with the search. Won't the friend and not really care as long as it's just an ID that's unique and appropriate for that thing so we can send it back? Basically, it just needs to be, as far as the friend is concerned, probably just needs to be a string, right? So I wouldn't recommend that in the JavaScript because that means that the the front end needs to be aware of how the back end database is working. I would create a a new object that sends to the front end that just has like ID colon and then you know string or number or however your ID is set up. Yeah, so exactly what you said, Super Cooper. Cooper. Uh, just get that, extract that out on the back end and then send that to the front end. So the front end doesn't have to be aware that there's any weird shenanigans going on with the database. It's, um, as far as it knows, here's the ID, this is what the ID is, and it doesn't care about anything else. It doesn't care about the, the implementation details of that ID. And then you can have a little utility function or something that extracts that out for you. Exactly. So transform that on the back end. Do I really want to do this? I think I just want to do a map and turn that, don't I? I don't really need to do any of that. I just get the book here, and then I want a... I want a... Okay. Oh, let's do this here. So we'll do a map. Uh, oh, I want to do an into into. And then we'll turn OK book like that. And that that should do that. Uh, this is another pattern that you can do uh, game stylist potentially. So if you if you have your own version, your own model that you're returning from your API. So in this case, I'm returning a book, but from the database, I'm getting a model and a model from a DB model, essentially. And so I've implemented from on my model for the DB model. And so I can just do this into into with a map on it. Uh, and then I can just return that. I'm using Postgres database with uh, C or M for my driver. I guess it's, that's technically not true. I'm using that for my ORM. It's using, oh, it's using something Postgres for the driver. 
But I think the same general idea is the same, right? Is you get back, you get back a model, uh, but it's the database model, not your model. And then you take your model and into it. Run into on it, and then that converts it into your model. So you have to implement from on yours. So if we go, if we go and take a look at my book. I have this from model for book. Uh, Postgres for mongoose for beginners. So, um, mongoose is what we call a document store. So, it think of it as just like JSON. I, I know it's like JSON B or something like that, but it's um, that's a superset of JSON. So it's basically a document, as it were, an object. Uh, you can just toss an object in, and each object can be different from each other. Now, I know you're using Mongoose, which will enforce a schema, but if you don't use Mongoose, there's no reason that like uh, document A and document B have to have the same shape. They don't have to. They can just be whatever, whatever you feel like. Postgres is a... Essentially, think of it more like a typed language, like a typed database. So there's, it's it's like a row and column. So think of it more like ex, um, Excel, something like a spreadsheet. And uh, you can have multiple sheets, which are known as tables. And those tables can link together through relationships. So you can say, okay, uh, something in this column on this table is going to match the value in another column in another table. And then when you do your your queries, you can say, okay, just get everything together. Now in Mongoose, now correct me if I'm wrong, because it's been a long time since I've used Mongoose. But with, with Mongo, if you want a relationship and you want to grab things, you have to do uh you have to do n queries where n is the number of relationships. So if you have here we have like a book and an author. So it's like, okay, I have a book and I have an author. Uh, that means I have to get all the authors, find the author ID, find the book IDs in the author. And then from there, do another query for all of the books based upon that. Uh, and then stitch them together in a front end. Whereas in Postgres, uh, the database will handle that for me. I can hand it a query using a specific language for the database and it will it will like sort of grab everything that I need from books and authors put them together for me and then return the entire sort of object or vector of objects really so there's less front-end work that I need to do with Postgres uh, but there's more database stuff I need to do for Postgres uh, does that make sense also am I correct with with uh, that being how Mongo is these days? Does it still not have relationships? And I do remember Mongoose, Mongoose has the idea of relationships. But really it's still doing the multiple queries and stitching together behind the scenes for you. But that still happens at runtime. Uh, on, in your code as opposed to in the database itself. I'm curious about this now. Let's, let's go take a look at it. Fine, I'll accept your cookies. Um, they have... I feel like Dark Reader is not working for this. Oh, it Dark Reader made it. Right?
Okay. But this is Realm. So is it the same thing where Realm is doing the the multiple queries? Uh, back back in the old days, um, I used Monk as the Mongo driver. Is that still used? What's what's like a normal Mongo driver? Not Mongoose, just Mongo. I want to see whether or not just the the plain driver has a relationship. Realm is pretty interesting. Um, I haven't I I stopped using Mongo right before Realm came out, but there were some students that were using it, and it looks pretty cool. Uh, Atlas is also really nice. Atlas is amazing. Free Mongo database in the cloud with uh, and if I remember correctly, it's not too expensive to um, at least like get it up a little bit if you have like a student or a um, like a basic project to work on. Like that's that's the way to go for that. Okay, so here's a list of drivers. We could go to Rust for this. Oh, look at that. There's absolutely nothing here on relationship. Okay, is there, is there an idea of a join? Not really. So my my understanding and reading from this is that there's still no there's still no real joins. There's still no real relationships in Mongo itself, which is the entire point of a document-based database. It doesn't have relationships. Uh, but because of that, if you have two documents that are related to each other, um, you or the library or framework you're using has to do multiple queries for you. And that's like the, the slowdown that you're going to get from Mongoose is probably mostly from that. But then again, if you stop using, if, if you need schemas and relationships and like, at, that's where it gets to the point where it's like, should we really use Mongo at that point? I think Mongo is really good for like just pure document type store type stuff. But I sometimes find it difficult for me to um, choose to use something like Mongoose when if I want a schema database, I might as well just go to a schema database like Postgres. I don't know, I have, I have trouble like deciding to pull out Mongo uh, a lot in the last few years. I think it's mostly because of that. There's some other databases that have been coming out recently, which might be really interesting, especially some of the graph databases. Okay, so I can get by D here, which means I go into routes. 
Another book. Okay, we're gonna get one book. Oh, this is going to be a result. Okay, so we need to return a result. Uh, okay, so you could do like an impul into response here and then the error is going to have to be a tuple of status code. I don't, I don't think I like the response object. I've, it, I don't think it's really been helpful for me. So I think I might do a um, rewrite and change, or like remove that. I think once we once we get through through with this assessment, I'm gonna look through it and um, we'll make some changes to it. I think it I think some of it come um, adds complexity that I don't want to test. For. Okay, so that gives me a book. Uh, Beat Porter, hello, good morning. How are you doing today? Uh, which could be a nun. I think that's okay. I think an option is serializable, right? So I can, I can throw that in. Not not horrible for the morning. Well, I mean, I. That's that's good. I mean, it's it's not horrible. So we got we got that going for us. All right, let's return an OK. And so this will also be now. A 200 OK is going to be fine. So in that case, I can just return a response object. New OK and hand it the book. Right. And I keep on forgetting over and over and over again. You need to be JSON.
I don't know that. I just like continuously forget that JSON tuple or the JSON tuple struct over and over and over again. I, I, I sort of feel that. I don't know. Like, I think my brain goes to, well, it should just automatically figure that out, right? But I mean, clearly it, it, it can't. It has to be in an, an extractor and a sender response and so like i i know i know in my mind why it needs to be there but like i just my my brain is having a hard time remembering to wrap it inside of that now i suppose this would be an argument for taking a response object and implementing into response for it Oh, that's what it would be is I take a response object, I implement into response for it, and then that that would handle that. That's what I probably want to do. Oh, so before you've got you got kids essentially on your own for a week, all day, every day. As someone who doesn't have kids, I will attempt to at least uh, fully empathize with you. But I'm I, I don't I have a cat. That's the closest I get. And I can leave the cat alone for a while. And when it gets quiet, that's good with the cat because it means it's sleeping. If you're having a problem, you can make a type alias. Yeah, I could do that too. Type alias kind of fell out of standard, but they're still fine. Like as in a lot of people just dropped. It's like, it's a strange thing in, in coding. We have, we have our own um, popularity type thing. It's like, oh, things get really popular and everybody does it. And then just for some reason, everybody stops. It's, it's like the meta of programming. It's like, oh no, no, I'm we can't use this build. You know, nobody you you can't you can't do that in Rust. That's not the current meta. Okay. So you're happy. That's getting one book. So should be able to run test. And you're passing. Okay, good. Uh, so where I think we were in the author test still. Was this part of delete an author? Okay, so get the database. I check to see if book author is there after we ran the delete. Oh, and then I want to see whether or not the the book is still there. So I relay. Okay, so I reloaded the book from the API, uh, and then I want to see if the book is still there. So. We have API book. But that's that's the actual book at that point in time. So I want to now assert book API book is none. but it's still something because it's still there. If you can't remember with a type of some random type and you can't find it, then you have to remember it's a type alias and some random file that can get annoying. 
That's true. That's true. I, I'm still trying to figure out good places to put things like that. I think I think essential models, like so centralized models at the root of the project is good. And one mega model for the thing with a bunch of sort of like small mini models that get created from that is good. I can put the logic for validation for those models inside of there too. And the conversion for, you know, moving, like turning them from one to another. Type aliases, I think. I think depend if it's if it's a type alias for one of the centralized things, it probably goes into the centralized location. If it's for like a very specific thing it goes in that specific. The only thing I can think of. Okay, so yeah, it's it's an it, it's an interesting question. And I think it, it keeps on changing around uh, based upon like wherever I look because nobody's really fully agreed or like it keep, people keep on just trying to experiment with different things, which is exciting. Like we're in that the language is still young enough that we're still trying to figure out how to how to use it really. And every time we add new features to the language, it changes things around. And perhaps what we were doing, we should no longer be doing. Maybe. Maybe there's a better way. I mean, most assuredly, there almost always is a better way. All right. So we are still getting a book. Um, if I debug the book here. Yes, yes, I know. Yeah, so API book is is this thing still. So that that still exists. So what can I do with this? I can, I think, I mean, assuming reload from API is actually doing what I think it's doing. It's not, I'm getting the book and doing nothing with it. Cool. Well, that would, that would, that would do something with it. Okay. So. Right, it's it's a response, isn't it? It's not a book. It's a response. How? Okay, so I'm doing reload from API. Okay, I'm I'm curious now. Here, what's in here? Okay, so here's reloading book from API. That's not, that's not how it works.
Ooh, okay. Relearning a book from API, I got a nun for everything. Because it's default and it doesn't exist anymore. Huh. How does that work? So... It's a status 200 okay for getting the book. Oh, but it's this isn't this isn't a book that I'm getting back. I'm getting back a response object with a book inside. Oh, it's because I had default in it. And so when it, when survey attempts to deserialize and there's nothing in there, it just becomes all nuns because they're options. Oh, uh, okay, interesting. Okay, so in this case, we got a status 200 data sum. Okay, so this still this still exists. Uh, which means that if I want to delete the book, we have to go to, we have to go to migrations Now, when I created the book authors, I created this foreign key, create. So did foreign key, book author book. So from book authors to books and then delete cascade. I wonder if I need to do this the opposite way too where I say, okay, I want you to essentially go the opposite. So this is from, and this is to. So from books to book authors on delete cascade. I wonder I wonder if that would work. So if I did that. I think it was reload. Refresh. Okay, roll back all applied migrations then reapply. Hmm. I do need to change the name of the migration. So this is, let's do it the other way around. This is foreign key book, book author. Column ID reference and foreign key constraint does not exist. Okay, so create book authors happens last. So it, it should have created by this time, right? Like this should now exist, the, um, the books table. Oh. Is it trying to apply? Oh, it's trying to apply the relationship before 
So I need to create a new relationship and a new migration just to apply the relationship, don't I? Oh, that kind of sucks. Okay, so this would be handle like cascade. I or maybe like add foreign key. Add foreign key to I don't like it. I say foreign key out loud, so let's do foreign. Add foreign key to books. I think that's what I want to do. Add foreign key to books. So I create that. That should add it to the table too, I think. And then we're going to add that in. Okay. So manager, create table. Oh, we need this thing. Oh, but I don't want it this to be a create table now. So this is going to be interesting. We're going to do our first update table. So instead of create table, Can you not tell me what's going on? Why is the, okay, to do macro is working now. So if I do manager, why are you so upset? Oh, stop. I'm not getting any help. Uh, either LSP re crashed or something else is going on. Okay. You're not you're not helping. What if I do that? No, stop. Okay, so I do that. You're unhappy. Okay, there's no there's no errors across everything. It's recompiling here. I can't go to schema manager.
You got updated, right? Okay, you got updated there. Oh my gosh, Helix. Okay, so what happened there was I had the library file open in my buffer. I ran the generate command to create a new migration that updated the library file behind the scenes. Helix doesn't take a look at the changes that happen, so the buffer is still open to the older version. Rust Analyzer is looking at the buffer, not the actual file, so therefore it thought that this file wasn't actually included in the entire workflow. But it was, and so when I reload all, then it starts working. Okay. That was fun. Okay, so instead of create table, I want to do an alter table. Computers, man. Yeah, I know. Okay, let's do an alter table and I do an table alter statement. Table alter statement. Which is just table. Table alter. So table alter. Um wait, set the name. Do I have to choose what what table I'm doing first? Okay, hold on. Let's go. Let's go to Sierra. Okay, so it's this dot table that I probably need. And so I grab it from the other one. Okay, so it's probably the alter table table. Right, so it's manager create. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah, okay, so manager alter table. And then it's going to be, so they do create dot table. Interesting. Then it's alter table. Okay. Now you're getting this from C query. C query. Why can't I find that? Oh, table alter. That's why. Table. Table alter. Okay. Dot table. We do the table name. So this is going to be books. 
Okay, so I want the crate. Okay, I'm going to get this from crate books. So thinking about this, I probably want... I probably want to set up a enum for this outside of each of these migrations. Because I want to be able to reference that one to make sure I really am referencing that one. And I don't like accidentally rename it or something. Okay, so I do table. Add foreign key. And then it's the table foreign key new. Okay, so name is going to be foreign key uh, books book author. Okay, so we do name from. Huh, this is from table as opposed to to table, like just from. Interesting. Okay, so from table is going to be from this one, right? So books, table. Wait, it's just. Ah, uh, then from column, books, ID. Two table book authors table two column book authors not author ID book ID uh, on delete. Um, foreign key action cascade, and then I think there's a build, maybe that's it. I wait. And into. Maybe not. Expected a table alter statement found immutable reference to a table alter statement. Oh, that's why it has to be two owned. Okay. Okay. Now, if I want to do the reverse here, I want to remove that that foreign key. So we're going to do manager alter table. Table alter. So table, books table, I want to drop foreign key. Uh, to make sure I'm doing this correct, let's... Should 
Should I do it that way? I don't know. You just also do this. To own that and return you. Oh, and then await you. Um, alias new. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so that might add the foreign table. So let's refresh. There is no unique constraint matching given keys for reference. Table book authors fail to run migration. Okay, so. It rolled back and then it typed to roll forward. There is no unique constraint matching given keys for reference table book authors. Fail to run migration. Is it the other way around that I need to do? From book authors? I mean, I probably could have renamed the, the types. That, that would have been better. I could try that. Column book ID reference and foreign key constraint does not exist. Ah. By this time, it absolutely should exist. Oh, you need this one. Okay, so not trying to do this in Rust, but this is a SQL thing. It's telling you the index needs to be unique. Let's um let's do this in SQL. Okay, so if I is it DS? Oh, I can't do I can't. I don't have any tables right now. So I need to just return Okay, so I didn't really do anything there, but now 
No, I don't want all of those. Why can't I see table of books? Okay, I have those there. What's what's my list? DL? DT, that's what it is. DT. Okay, I want to try and alter table. Okay, let, let's first look at this. If I do um, DS with a capital S and I look at uh, book authors. Okay, indexes. Book authors, primary key, author ID, book ID. Foreign key constraints, I have book author author, foreign key from author ID here, references, author's ID on delete the cascade. Book author book, foreign key, book ID references, books ID on delete cascade. And then I want the other way around too, right? So can I do that? I guess we'll, we'll try this one first, right? So if I do alter table, uh, let's describe the other one too. Describe books. It created it. Oh no, no, it has it on there already. Book authors constraint. Foreign key book author book. Foreign key book ID references books ID. So table book. Oh, it's just referenced by. Okay, so it's just referenced by. So it's not the reference. Interesting. Okay, so if I delete. Okay, so we have free book, expensive book, unavailable book. And in book authors, each one is unique. So if I if I delete, so if I uh, delete from book authors where book ID is equal to one that should delete the free book, right? And I guess really I want to delete the authors, don't I? Okay, so let's if I delete unpublished, you don't have any books, right? So if I delete author ID two, you only have that one. So let's delete from authors where ID is equal to one, no, two, like that. That deletes one. Then, so table authors, you only have those two, okay, table uh, book authors. You have, okay, those ones. So book ID one is gone from this one. And then table books. The free book is still here. So that, that didn't work. So I did need to add in, I do need to add in the, um, the on delete cascade. Okay, so uh, I need to add in. I think that means so I did it from that one to authors. So 
So in book authors, I have a foreign key, book author, author, foreign key, author ID, references, authors ID, undelete cascade. So when authors delete, it cascades to here. But when this deletes, it doesn't go out to the other one. So I need to create a foreign key. Did I just do them both backwards? When I delete an author, I want to delete. I feel like maybe maybe I did the author one correctly. Hold on, let's, let's come back to here. Only one direction. If you delete a book, I assume you don't want to delete the author who might have other books do. Yeah, is there is there a way to have it delete yeah, I know. Um, I guess I guess it makes sense not to delete the book because the book might have other authors. I delete an author, but that doesn't mean that the book doesn't exist anymore. Can I, can I cascade? Can I cascade if there's no other relationships? I don't think that's a database thing, right? I have to do that with either a trigger or a, another query. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's, so Postgres, SQL, I uh, cascade, I want to delete, um, oh, there's a many to many, I want to delete if no other, um, no other relations. Not exactly sure the best way to search for this. I mean, these might, these might be what I want. Hmm. That's not, that's not right. I think you're right though. I think I think this might not be something I can do in, in Postgres, or at least it's not something I'm aware of how to do in Postgres. It 
I feel like it, it might be too much logic to throw into a sequel statement. I know you can do some pretty amazing things with a sequel. I, this might be beyond its capability, or or maybe there's just something crazy I can do. But when it gets to crazy, usually, usually that's an indication I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> So in, in that case, I have the database set up correctly, and what I should do is follow up with a check to see if the book exists, and if it, if it doesn't have any other authors, delete it. I could do it with a trigger, but yeah, that's very side effecty, and that's not... I'm not teaching triggers in this course, so... What I want to do is, okay, so we're, we're going to undo, we're going to undo creating this migration. So I want to buffer close that. I want to remove a foreign key to books. Buffer close you. Okay, um, I want to move. I want to remove this one. Okay. Which I think is still going to be fine. So if I refresh the database. That should still work. And foreign key to uh, migration has been. Oh, yeah. Um, reset. Oops. Um, okay. Well, I removed, I removed the migration before I did the reset, which is a problem. So I need to do a, uh, there's the SQL migrations, so. Let's delete from SQL migrations where version equals this. Not with the space in it, please. Oh, I need to figure out in Helix how how to do the um, the Vim mode. I know that you can do Vim mode uh, natively in here. Okay, so that roll back, and then we can do an up. Okay, so everything should be everything should be back now. Okay. The way to solve this is going to be in the front end. We're going to after we delete the after we delete the author, that deletes the book author and then we check to see if the book has any other if the book has any other authors. So we need there's a bunch of stuff we need to do. So in our models
Uh, I need you to have authors in here. Yes, I'm in model. Okay, so it'll be one of those. From the book, I think we can get those when I when I get the one book. Yeah, you may or may not have that. Ooh. So entities books. I have this relation to get there. Oh, hey, Zilby, welcome back. Okay, well, his tail is showing. Are you going to join us up here? No? Okay, so let's, let's first start with authors is just a new vec. And that's the same here. Uh, but I need... In the book queries. Oh, hey. Instruction are you going to lie down? Okay, so map into so I get before I get the one oh because I can't get one I have to do oh what's the, what's the thing to like add in all of the related okay find with related find with related uh, I want the auth Authors and okay, so this is gonna be entity authors. See, you have to be all. Um, you give me a vector, so I want to into iterator, so I own that. I into that, which then gives me the need to collect you. Uh, gonna collect you into a vec of book. So it gives me a vec of book. So if I guess we can get the first one, right? So I would I wish I could do this with the result, but I, I don't think I can. So if you let um book equals book dot so give me the first else Undo an early return of OK with a none. Uh, 
Absolutely. Well, thank you for uh, hanging out, B-Porter. And uh, have a good day at work. Okay, so that gives me a book there, and I want to do a book. And we're going to into this. Um... Oh, oh, I don't need to do that. I just need to uh, clone it. I need to sum clone it. Okay, there we go with that. Uh, you're upset. From model. Might not be satisfied. Wait, okay. So the trait bound models, book, book, standard convert from entities, books, model, standard vec, vec, entities, authors, model. Oh, because it's, it's this thing. Right, it's a tuple. It's a tuple, which this will work. Wait, wait. I need it. I need to see. It's a tuple of owned model and a vector of. Is that owned? That's owned. Okay, we can we can deal with this. This will be fine. Everything will be fine. So we have we have you. Let's do another one. We're going to impulse from. Uh, this is going to be a tuple of model. But then the other one is entity authors model. Oh, but it's not that. It's actually a vector. Or book. Okay, now, now we're starting to, to get somewhere. So I want to turn self. Okay, so the rest of this should be pretty, pretty standard, right? We're going to do um, ID is going to be a sum value dot ID. Oh, no, 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 no. So from can I destructure this here? I wonder if they'll let me. So I want you to be the book authors. Book dot ID. some book dot name some book dot price some book dot in stock and then authors is gonna be the vector of that of an auth so I want to take authors into iterator. I want to map into into for it and collect it together. The trait bounds author convert from Andy's model model is not satisfied okay is that because you're only doing it from that's what it is okay it doesn't have owned it doesn't have an owned from okay 
So if I do this, that should start working here. Okay, that gives me that gives me the single book with the authors. Um Is this really how helpful is this really? Um I mean, it's, it's helpful in the future. Uh, is this helpful for the now? I need to... What do I need to do? I need to extract... Uh, what am I doing? We're deleting author. So we've successfully... Okay, let's go to the router. Let's trace. Let's trace what's happening. So in, in author, okay, so I delete, I delete the author. I have the author ID here. I guess what I want to do if we think about this I want to clean up any books that no longer have any authors and that's all I want to do I just want to clean up books that don't have authors so that should be what the that should be what I do I get all of the books that don't have authors so I get all those models I loop through them. And if any of them don't have any authors, I delete it. So the only thing I can think of is like a cleanup, a cleanup books. Queries, so we could have a cleanup. No, I don't. I don't want to do like this. Is too much business logic in here. I think. It's almost like I want to get all books. I mean, I could do a query to get all books without authors. So, all books without authors. I have the author ID, so I could also get book by author ID. That's probably that's probably the better way than trying to get every book all into memory at once, which like when we don't have that many books, it's not that big of a problem. But eventually, like if this was a library or something, we'd have a ton. Why do I keep on forgetting the function? OK, so that want the author. ID, which is an I32. This should be plural, probably. So result with a vec of book. All 
Okay, so how do I want to do this? I can get, I think I have to start this from the join table. So so let, um, let's do this one step at a time. So let, let our book authors equals, We're gonna start with the, I think it's it's the entity, right? So entity, book authors, uh, entity, wanna find. That doesn't have a filter? Oh, there it is, filter. I want the entity book authors column book ID to equal no author ID equal author ID I want to get ooh I want to get um what is it find find with related huh this is a, find also related find with related Find with related. Give me everything, the database. We await you and question mark you. Okay, so that gives me a vector. Okay, that gives me a vector with the model, which in this case is going to be the the book author and the books. So I'm going to loop through here and find where there's no there's no books wait but the author's been deleted from here the author has been deleted from here so this won't work so i need i do need to get author so i do need to get this does feel like it's a cleanup action. It's like not necessarily like a normal query. Um, I need to get all, so let's do get books without authors. So we're gonna start with, this has to be books. So we have to, we have to do this with books. We have to start here with books, entity find. I could join the authors from this. No need that filter. Find with related. And do authors entity. 
Give me everything. This would be really cool if there was like find without related. I don't know if I can do that. Okay, so I think I have to do the find with related. Okay, so find with the authors. We get all of them. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know a good way to do this without just getting them all. <laughs> I mean, if there was too many books, I guess I could stream it. Um, and I could also batch this later. And they just sort of like sit here without any authors now. Um, but okay, so. Books. Okay, so we have the book, and then we have the VEC model, and then. I want to filter by the model is empty. So. Into iterator, we're going to filter. Uh, we have the book and the authors. Uh, filter is true. If it's true, okay, will yield only elements for which the, re the closure returns true. So I want, if there's no length, I want that to be true. Okay, so I want authors dot is empty. If that's true, return true. Uh, No, stop. And we're going to collect this. Um, I guess this, this turns into where we have the model. I, I could filter map this. Maybe I want to filter map this. So filter map. Um, oh, I return. Okay, so if off, if authors is is empty, I want to return a. Uh, is it an option there? I think I think it's an option I return right. So I return a sum of the book. Um, this should be book from book. Else Return none. Then I collect you into you, which have a book and a vec. Ooh, but it's not that. It's also a tuple. Okay, which is then going to be author. Uh, 
from no then i need oh then authors is gonna be this model uh, uh it's becoming this is coming not not fun iter map into into i wonder if it's going to figure this out so i want to i want to back up author that Oh, and then you're a vector of these, right? Is a vector. Oh, but then you're you're still a map, so I need to collect you. Okay, so you figured that out. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, compiler, for figuring that out. So now I have, I now have a vector of books that have no authors. So it's the vector. The vector is empty. I mean, I could double check that there's that there's nothing in here, but it it should work. So this is get books without authors. Um, and I have a tuple of these, which then I can, I can now into that. Okay, so I want to now return this with an okay. Books dot into. Oh, but I don't have it for. Oh, okay, so books dot into iterator. Oh. Okay, so books into iterator map into. Collect. Okay, so there's there's a couple things here. So uh so books going through is a tuple, a book and vec author. So models book convert from tuple book Oh because those are those are actually the models uh, Wait a second are you all that I don't want to do this I don't want to do a filter map I just want to do a filter I don't want to convert the from. I want to do that later. Just give me the authors. Some book. Oh, I probably need to two owned it. What are you expecting? Mismatch types expected a boolean. Oh, it's a boolean. Um, right, because it's no longer a filter map. So now, now I can just return authors. If you're empty, return true. I want to. I want to turn you into.
I wonder if you'll figure out what collect is supposed to be. I'm, I'm curious about that. Kind of. So that's, let's just, no, uh, kind of like doing it here. Okay, so we're going to have a vector of a tuple of a model and we have a book model so entity books model and then a vector of entity authors model okay you're happy and then I can do this here. So I don't even need this author ID at this point, unfortunately. Because I don't have it. It doesn't exist in a database. Uh, OK, so get books without the authors at this point in time. Oh, sorry, it'll be. Okay, so we're going to go to the router book. So we. No, I want to do this in author router. Okay, so I delete the author. Okay, so I, I deleted the author. Before we get to here, I want to do uh, let books without authors rules get books without authors and the database or we'll wait and question mark uh, I can't do question mark Now, if this fails, it's not the worst thing in the world. So I think I think I still want to do an OK, but I want to I want to log this out. So we're gonna tracing. This is an error here, so error getting books without authors after deleting author. But I guess I, I do want to do an early return. Okay. Why are you upset? Type annotations needed. Why? That one didn't need type annotations. Where would I put the type annotations? Um, Empty response there. Supply one generic argument and missing, add missing argument O, E. Uh, so I want, this is gonna be a status code. That, huh. Nope. Okay, 
hold on before before we get all this stuff in so i get the books without authors and then i want to okay so this is a result I'm mean, going to guess it's not, I do, I do want to return, return status code, no content. So I return, okay, this one. Oh, I could return this with an error. Oh, that, that could be interesting. Hold on, let's try that. So if I do an early return of, we'll do, I guess it can't be a 204 at this time. We'll do a 200. So uh, status code, okay. Uh, you're gonna be an error. And then you're going to be a JSON response object. Okay, new content. I think this is more of, um, yeah, that might be fun. What are you upset about? Um, type parameters needed. Um, new OK. Empty response. Oh, right, needs to be a sum. Are you still upset? Still need type annotations. So I return an error. Oh, so no longer need the return. I'm returning the error from this, and I go like that. And I don't need an error like this if I'm returning a tuple like that, do I? There we go. Okay, that's that's what I. Need. Most of the time, my problems with Rust are just me, me confusing myself, and therefore confusing Rust. Okay, so now I have books without authors. I want to loop through each book. And I want to I want to delete the book then. So I want to go to book queries again. So pub async. I don't know if I could do a mass delete or not with I probably could do a mass delete with with CRM. Delete many. Ah, so then I get I get just the filters to delete which ones they are. So if I find the IDs of them, which I think I have through here, it says to delete many. 
We'll take in the database. We'll take in the books, which is going to be a vector a book. And and take empty result. Okay, so I need I need the IDs to then add in a filter for each of these. So I guess I start with these and then I I uh, add in the filters over time. So we're going to have our query. We're going to delete many. So if I start you, that's a delete many. Now query dot filter that returns. Okay. So it owns self and it returns self. Okay. So filter where So filter where and see books column ID is equal to, okay. So hold on. I need to do, I need to do this slightly differently. We're now going to do, I do a loop through. So if I mutate that, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be updating this, but I wanna create that scope out here. So I can do four book and books. I don't, don't, I don't need to take ownership, but also I don't need to keep it either because they're, we're one and done with this. So I, I might as well take ownership of it. Okay, so for book and book, we have this query. So I'm going to do query equals book dot. I want to add a filter. Okay. Oh, it's not book. It's query. Want to add a filter here. Entity books. Column ID is equal to book dot ID dot um, Okay, so I get the ID out there, so then I can just do ID here. Okay. So equal, uh, need it. Import you. Okay, so I do this over all the books that have now been deleted, which there shouldn't be that many, but there might be, there might be a few. Uh, and then I want to run delete on this. We can do query dot. Okay, so we've already done the filter. I think it's an exec, right now? Yeah, now it's exec. And the DB.
and we're good to go there. Okay, so now I can, I've got the books without authors, they're the vec without that, so I want to book queries, delete many, and at the books without authors, we'll await, we'll map the error. I don't want to do the exact same thing. We're going to return an okay and just pretend that everything's okay. Because as far as the, it's it's our problem now. Okay, so if I run our tests again, immediate errors. Okay, what happened? Missing field authors in initializer a book. Okay, so tests author. Oh, now needs this thing. Okay, so tests authors. Yeah, so if I'm creating if I'm creating an author here, I need so books, we have authors it is an empty back. Oh, when did it become in stock? I want that to be authors. Why is that some true? Uh. Okay, so you're happy. Okay, so you failed with a few tests. Uh, we have left is not equal right. Okay, so. Oh, we have some 422s. That's the delete not allowed, right? Or that's the method not allowed? Okay, so that's associate author with book in test models 149. So hold on. Uh, test models. This is create an API. Is this book? Okay, so create an API is getting a 422. I have books create book. What are you talking about? 
So, books. Great book there. Okay, so what are what are you upset about then? So test models line 149. We got a 422 and we wanted a 201. So test models line 149 here. Um, what's up? Uh, 422 is, is unsupported method, right? Unprocessable content. Oh, that's different. Hold on. What happened to you? Did you... So 200, 200, 204. Okay, here's a here's a 422. Okay, so it's a post slash books. So okay, we started processing the request. We finished processing the request. We got a 422. Unprocessable request, huh? And then, and then we did this. That's right there. This is the other one here. Okay, so basically, yeah, it just immediately dives into, hey, you didn't do anything. Okay, so. In the router book, in create book, I'm getting JSON book. I bet it's unprocessable because this didn't. Authors is a VEC of author. Do you implement default? You need, you don't implement default. I need default there. You need to implement default here. Okay, so you're running again. We still got 422. I wonder if that needs to be an option. I bet it needs to be an option. I would have imagined that if it doesn't, if it isn't there, it's fine, but um, I probably need this to be an option here so that survey doesn't yell yeah, hissy fit. You need to be Okay. Okay. 
Right. So when I into and I collect you, so authors, you become a sum. Game Stylist, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, the CMS, is, it's um, LMS. Uh, but uh, I mean, essentially, MV, Super MVP is ready. Uh, so very, very MVP is ready, um, as far as I know. And uh, now I'm working on assessments for an actual course. Okay, so let's try this again. Ah, now I got a 200 when I want a 204. Because it failed. It failed to get something. Okay, so we... Error getting books without authors after deleting query. Error returned from database. Table name books specified more than once. Oh, and here's the query. So select books ID, books name, books price, books in stock, author's ID, author's name, from books, join book. <laughs> oh no, join books. That seems wrong. It should be join book authors on book authors. Oh, game styles. Yeah, you've been here. Okay, never mind. The question the question made me think that maybe it was it was new. Sorry. My 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 brain my brain wasn't thinking about that. Um I I want to I want to set up something to like let me know when it's because like I get I get something in Twitch if it's a first time if it's a first time chatter ever, but I would love to see a little annotation if it was like first time this stream. That would be really nice. Basically, I want to automate it so I don't have to think. <laughs> that's that's what I want. Um, I'm using Axum instead of ActixWeb. You come time to time. I know, but I want to greet you and say, like, you know, ask how you're doing the first time you, you come. Each day. You find logging and axum hard. I'm using tracing in for logging for this right now. It's logging to the console. And I think I can configure tracing to log to someplace else. I'd have to I'd have to look into it a little bit more. If I want to like log to a file or something. I'm pretty sure I can do that though. So you see like these uh these errors here, this is all tracing. And I'm also getting these debugs out of tracing too. Oh, how to print the result also? 
There's a way to do that. I haven't looked at it. Theoretically, you can you can set that up to to do that as long as the result implements survey serialized, then it would work. I think what this is trying to tell me is that I've screwed up my relationship for books. So if I go to entities books, has many authors entity, there's that. So I think I wanna do the opposite way. It's two book authors author i think it's a two hmm. via book authors so via book authors relation authors this is books i think it might be that this is runtime relationship, so I don't think I need to rerun anything else. Oh, now it's different. Missing from clause entry for table book authors. Left join auth, oh. Weird, okay, so this is. Oh, that's not. I want to join in, I want to join in the what we can we can see the other ones right okay select this left join book authors on authors id so i did it correctly on authors yeah yeah so i i know i know it's possible to do to log the request to log the response of the request um, I haven't done that, but I, I know that, uh, let's see, creates, is it tracing? There's tracing and then there's Okay, so we could do layer, layer, tower HTTP, trace, trace layer, new for HTTP. Can I, do I do another layer for the trace body? There's on response. New for HTTP. Hmm. That's just a function that doesn't take anything in.
default on response. Okay, so I want to wonder if I need to on response. Then you need to take in these things. What are you? On response. Oh, but is this is this self? Oh, so I need to do like a new. Hold on. Oh, can I do new for HTTP? On response. New on response. On body chunk. New on Uh oh. I'm not seeing any help with this. Oh, and you have no idea what that is. Uh oh. Uh oh. What what are you? Oh, you can't even find this. So, okay, so this is where it's defined, apparently. So, on body chunk, wait, is that a, is that, oh, it's a generic. That's why, it's a generic. Oh. New on body chunk is expected to implement on body chunk. On body chunk is super on body chunk. Okay. On body chunk. It's an interface. Oh, default on body chunk. Simply does nothing. Ooh, so I'm not gonna, okay, so let's just do this to go take a look at it, at least. It's a trait with a generic. Do the thing, okay, cool. On body chunk. We don't really see that. New to print, you think? Okay, let's try that. I mean, I've already done new for HTTP. That's, that's literally what we have right here. So trace layer new uh, a make classifier generic Okay, so that might be, there's no, wait, new to print, where, where is that? I didn't see that in new for HTML. Um, there might be a, a configuration. So I think it's, it's like tower HTTP.
We could also go to Axum and see if they have any login examples. Okay, tracing aka logging, that's the only one in here. do the on response to get the response like this oh on body chunk we get the just the raw one doesn't really doesn't really feel like a super in-depth example of like showing exactly what we're doing uh okay so i could do on response i get the response here so Okay, so it's just these things. So we get the response. Uh, we get the duration. And I get a span, which I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I want to Let's see, can I get the body in the response? Okay, body. So it returns a reference to the associated HTTP body. How about JSON? There's no JSON. Okay, so I can get body. Now, can I tracing debug body is Type annotations needed. Okay. So, oh, because I don't know what it is. So, hold on. What are you? You're an unsync box body bytes error. And so if I do this, you're okay, but now we need, now we need this. So Hold on. Uh, can I fit response in the scope? Okay, so I can't. Where did I put that? I put that in response. With span missed? What do you mean missed? So can I just do, okay, so if I return that, 
expect it to be closure that returns nothing. Okay, that's what it is. So return nothing. Implementation of standard ops function once not general enough. Closure function function to a response. Um, which example? This one doesn't really. Give me anything. And you have a reference to span there, so. Okay, so you're not happy unless I return something, I think. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's. Oh, okay, you're adding in a comma because it's part of calling the layers. That's okay, that's fine. Um, I'm returning nothing in here. That's also okay, I think. Implementation of center of. Okay, so what are you doing here? Do I have to do all of these things? So new for tree, new for HTTP. Yeah, it's not doing anything else. It just has all of these in here. So here, if I add in this layer like that. Import that. Uh, import. I think it's an axum request. Import that. It's a tracing info span. Missing generics, okay. Mm, it's not good. Expected one generic ar argument. So I need to put into here like what you are. So like you're a string. So I don't know what you are, right? Ooh, I don't know which which bytes this is. Yeah, let's not worry about that. It could be on the odd body chunk, too. Uh, which bytes are you? Oh, your axe and body bytes. Okay, you're that one. Better map. Header map on failure. Okay, so I've got all those things. Can I change you to like a generic? OK. 
Can I find type T? Okay. So I need to... Yeah, I would need to... Oh, I need to, like... It needs to be a specific thing. So, like, we don't know. I guess I could say, like, hey, you're a string. Uh, if you're a string, then I want to... Uh, do tracing. Debug. Respond doesn't implement display. I do debug. I can't. Okay. So that's on response, but then this layer is having trouble. Type mismatch for a closure. Expected closure signature for A B lifetime A B function. A HP combinators box on the same body to implement tower trace on response. That ends there with another layer added in. I don't think I have to. Oh, but I think it's telling me signature defined here. This might be the problem that's causing the thing up above there. So it's a lifetime issue. And I don't know what you are. So, okay, let's maybe we could try the on body chunks. So if I, I don't need the request. Well, I mean, I probably do want the request, but on that gives me the stream on failure. So I'm, I'm only going to work worry about mix bandwidth. Okay, so I don't think I need any of these things. I think I want new for HTTP on body chunk. I can get that chunk with her bite. Uh, how are you implemented? Bytes. Okay, so we have a. Oh, those are private fields. Okay, so I could do. I guess I could do slice to get slice. Then it's just a range. Oh, I could do, oh, copy, no, no. These are all creating. So slice is the only one I can think of. So I 
Right, chunks. Cross chunk. Returns an iterator over chunk size elements of the slice of time starting at that. I could also use slice. So chunks returns an iterator over the size. So if I have a slice like this, chunks two gives me these two there. So I want everything, right? But I can get length turns number of bytes contained in, in the bytes. Okay, so I want Chunks. Chunk that length. So give me give me all those. Uh, and then I guess I can I'll, I could eventually like com combine it together, but because I'm out of time, let's just try tracing and log this. Um, or I could just for, for loop it and log that. So for uh, chunk. Um, I could use, so if I, if I put these all together, then I could probably do like a string or a, some like a stir or a string from, from bytes, which I think there is one, right? Um, can I collect these? Well, I can collect them. Uh, and then that goes into what, like a vector of U8? It's a reference. Okay, so I want a reference. Ooh, so it's like a it's a reference view eight. I don't know how long they are, right? Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to play this some other time. Uh I wanna undo until I'm back to the trace for new HCP only. There we go. That makes you happy. Yeah, so we'll have to... We could play with that some of the time. I, I know it's possible, because I've seen people do it. Uh, I just haven't haven't looked into how to do that specifically. So... Uh, either, either I can get it through the response, probably, or I can get it through the... Uh, I guess I, I can get through the response or I can get it through the um, the chunks probably and then and go there I could probably also like just um, Google it and and figure that out but I don't know sometimes sometimes figuring these out like helps me understand it a lot more which is why I like to to go with it I wish that these would actually show examples of doing something with this but the example isn't, this doesn't feel like a full example to me. Uh, all right, so 
Um, that being all said and done, it's 8.51, which means I have to, uh, I have to run off. So, run off, go do my day job. Uh, tomorrow I'll be back, but it'll be a short stream because I have to head to work. Um, and, I, when I'm heading into the office, I have to head off closer to seven than, than eight. So, I am going to be ending the stream between 6.45 and 7 in the morning, which means that it's, like, at most an hour long. So, anyways... Uh, thanks all for uh, hanging out with me today. Sorry, uh, Game Stylist, we didn't figure out the on response thing uh, with tracing, but I know it's possible. So with that, have a great rest of your day, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye.